Hey guys, NJ here, and we're having a quick look today at the XSR F3E by uh, FreeSky. Now this is a flight control board, um, one that's multifunctional, and you know this kind of multifunctional flight controller thing's kind of all the rage at the minute. There's uh, lots of different combinations, flight controllers, uh, PDBs with current sensors in, OSDs, you know, that this is definitely... Uh, uh, a thing right now and it, it makes sense moving forward it's going to mean your builds are tighter more compact and uh, yeah the results seem to be good especially with things like the beta flight board uh, kicking around and some of the great ones by furious FPV um, but here uh, FR Sky, Free Sky, however you pronounce it have decided to uh, to get involved and what they've done is uh, adding the very popular and excellent XSR uh, receiver um, the XSR obviously being a, a proper diversity um, receiver with uh, smart port telemetry um, so it's a really good one to to throw into a uh, flight controller you know why not um, what I will say about this flight controller that I don't like uh, straight away is the orientation um, for some reason uh, if you look at the the direction of the arrow here it would have the USB coming out the front and then the uh, the antennas coming out the side which is no good at all but um, it's not a big one to fix is it we just go into bait flight and we make a probably a, a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation in the board alignment and then we can have that on the side and the antennas coming out the back which will make a lot more sense and I think just in case you're interested that's the actual gyro just off center there um, the, speaking of the gyro it is the 9250 um, which is it's basically it's a 6500 gyro which is the more noise sensitive one that you know can give problems it's, it's not um, it's not my favorite gyro I prefer the 6000 um, and you know people like Boris have, have quite openly said the 6000 is really the one to go for and it's, it's certainly the most favourable of, of the gyros out there right now um, but the uh, the 9250 is based on the 6500 um, it just has the addition of the compass and barometer um, built into it that said all you have to do is be a little bit careful with your soft mounting and it's certainly very flyable you can get great results out of the uh, 6500 9250 I certainly have in the past as I said you just have to be a little bit uh, cautious when and experimental when it comes to the soft mounting and getting that just right as you did with things like the uh, original version of the uh, Luminir Lux which was very popular board flew well was troublesome for others you just as I said you just have to mess around with it to get it right so other things on here we have um, a standard header here and they include a little loom uh, for uh, connecting up to the signal pins uh, on your uh, on your ESC's uh, there is six available there and if we flip that over um, you also have these uh, micro solder pads here so it's nice that they've given you the solder pad option should you want to solder directly rather than use the header but you know the header's there if you don't want to solder to these tiny little uh, tiny little signal pad so there's there's a nice option there you also have the uh, 5 volt in there which will power the XSR again you know this is just one of those things that's nice is when you plug in the USB um, you know it, it does actually power up uh, you run 5 volts to the board it does power up the the XSR on board and you can do your radio configuration without having to uh, plug in the flight battery it's, it's only a little thing but it does bother me when when you can't actually do that on uh, on some boards so that's a nice thing you've actually got two buttons on here they have included you can see just under this what looks like kind of captain tape on top here or something that color there is a boot uh, button there it's very very tiny let me just try and get this uh, focus for you so there is the boot button but it is a button and it does press um, if I just give it a little there you go you can hear that clicking and then here this big button uh, is for the um, XSR for, for binding it and for setting fail safe just as you do with a regular XSR um, and I like the fact that both of these are on the edge of the board um, in this orientation you can kind of get to that if it's the top one in the deck which uh, hopefully you know it normally is the top one in the deck um, so yeah it's nice that they're on the edge making those a little bit easier to get to uh, in terms of uh, you know pushing them once the board's installed in your quad um, the other things we've got here um, that are quite important is how would this be set up um, in terms of running with um, things like the smart port telemetry what UARTs are things on now um, it is actually pretty well documented in the manual that comes with it and uh, you can get this online as well it's always worth checking online in case there's been any revision updates 
uh, to uh, the software or anything that you need to know, uh, go off to the FOSCAR website and download this manual just to cross-reference it anyway. Um, but they do say um, in the port select UART2 to be Serial RX, set the UART3 to be Smart Port, and that's really the important part. And it does uh, come pre-flashed with Beta Flight. I think this one came with three. 3.01 I think um, I've flashed uh, bait flight uh, 316 on there and that has been absolutely fine no problems at all there the target is the um, SPF3 EVO very important you flash the correct target on there um, and then it also sends the RSSI down uh, channel 8 so um, what else is there to say about this um, we have voltage sensing uh, things are a little bit tricky to see here on the camera because it is um, it's the, the screen prints pretty pretty tiny um, it might be easier in fact if we have a look at what's written on the manual here um, but if we have a look with the board orientated correctly with USB at the bottom um, yeah you can see the VBAT it's got a VBAT uh, a VBAT header right there so that you can uh, take voltage off of the main PDB rail and send that back to the flight controller, very useful. Uh, you have got a current sensor in if you're running a current sensor. And then these three are important. So if you look on the edge here, we have um, S port, this S here is for S port, five volts and ground. And these are a pass through for the XSR. Now, why would that be important? Why would you need to wire these in if the S port's you know, wired straight in to one of the UARTs? Um, you know, why would you need access to these? Uh, and the reason is uh, access to these three, the S port, five volt and ground, means that we can plug it into the back of the Tyrannus. And I've done a video on that, so I'm, I'm going to uh, just pop that up in the right hand corner for you to see. Um, we can connect those three pins to the back of our Tyrannus uh, module on uh, our X7 or um, X9D and we can upgrade the XSR's firmware because obviously this USB deals directly with the firmware on the flight controller itself um, but you would need to um, attach a just a cable like one of these little servo headers we need to arrange these in the right order to connect to the back of the module bay on your Tyrannus and then we would solder these three uh, the correct way round, so we'd have uh, ground 5 volts and then I'd, in this case I'd use the yellow wire to S port and then I can actually flash the latest version of the XSR firmware onto the XSR chip on here. Um, that's also important if you are running the wrong firmware, for instance this one has been sent over to me from, uh, from Banggood in China and it has come with the um, non-EU uh, firmware on here which is no good for me so I will be connecting that up and flashing the EU LBT firmware onto there so I have wired on the top here uh, the S ports the 5 volts and the ground uh, on the side here to go to the XSR that's built in and then on the module bay of uh, both the X9D and the QX7 that I have here you have the S port on the bottom the ground in the middle and then the 5 volts uh, at the top and that is on these bottom three pins so the pins facing towards the battery S port on the bottom ground and then 5 volt you don't use the top two pins so this method requires one more step than you would normally do with uh, an XSR or similar as I showed in my other video and the reason is because the XSR is built onto the board and they're sharing the same 5 volt rail when this powers up um, because remember this is also going to be providing the 5 volts um, to flash the uh, internal XSR that's built into this. It's a common 5 volts across the whole board, uh, that's a common rail. So what's going to happen is it's going to boot up the flight controller as well and that immediately is going to kick in and start communicating with the XSR um, over S-Port and it will mean that when you're flashing, trying to flash the XSR it's going to fail. Um, so I had a little cup of tea and a think about it and then worked out what you need to do. Um, you actually need um, to hold down the boot button on the board uh, not the uh, the button for the actual XSR, but the, the, the boot button for the flight controller which is next to it. And by holding that down when the flashing sequence starts and the power is applied to the board, it will stop the flight controller booting up, it will stop it communicating with the XSR and therefore free up that S port uh, to talk to the um, talk to the Tyrannus and it will all uh, flash without any problem. So I shall go ahead and show you that now. As I said, I need to put the uh, EULBT firmware on here. I've got the 
right one from the FR Sky website. So let's go ahead and do it. Um, so we are going to hold down the settings button to go into the sub settings. We're going to page across once. This shows us the uh, folders on the SD card. I put the uh, firmware that we need in the firmware folder. So we're going to go into that. And you can see all the other firmwares I've got here that I've uh, I've used to flash other receivers. And then down at the bottom is the one that I put on there. So it's the XSR F3 um, EU, uh, the EU LBT build, which is this one. I'm going to hold down on it and it will say flash external so we don't want to flash the internal module that would be a horrific mistake uh, flash external device because we're going via the external module bay and then as I said I'm going to need to hold the boot button down on the flight controller I'm just going to use my spudger here to hold down that tiny little uh, boot button there we go so I'm holding down that boot button um, and that will mean that this will now flash and it won't boot up the flight controller which will interfere and now if I do flash external device and there we go, straight away you can see it's writing and while that's done I can now let go of that boot button and you can see the XSR lights are doing what they should be doing and that is now writing so let's do its thing and then we should, after doing that, I'll be able to desolder these and we should be able to uh, now bind my EULBT Tyrannus with that with the correct uh, firmware on it, so we shall see so assuming that was all successful we are now going to add some power to this board um, we're going to hold down the XSR button which is the large one just to put uh, the XSR itself into bind mode so we'll hold that button add some power and we know that's in uh, bind mode because we have a solid red and green light um, we're going to go to our Tyrannus now and we are going to hold down the, or we're just going to press once the settings button. Uh, we're going to page across once and I'm just going to scroll back to the bottom here and we shall go to bind and hopefully we should now get a successful bind. And we had the flashing red light which means we've had a successful bind so I can stop that. I can take off the power now and then if we exit out of there and we add that in as you can see we've got a flashing green light there I think you can just about make that out I'll try and add a little bit of a shadow there so you can see that is now working which is, uh, which is great uh, and you can see we've got a nice uh, strong receiver strength so we know that's working fine so uh, that's been successful and that method definitely works so if you do pick up one of these it's pretty straightforward to upgrade the XSR portion of it and then obviously upgrading uh, beta flight on the main board via the standard USB well that bit's a piece of cake. So as described in the manual UART2 is on Serial RX, UART3 is on Smart Port. Uh, there's a couple of kind of ghost UART1s down the bottom here I'm not sure if that's a bug in beta flight or whether it's a quirk of the way this board is wired up uh, but it's certainly not affect affecting functionality so you know don't worry about it. Uh, in the configuration you can see I've made an adjustment of 275 degrees uh, which is the same as rotating the board around 90 degrees to the left or counterclockwise. Um, so the aerials are out the back and the USB is on the left hand side but you rotate that as you as you see fit. Uh, serial based receiver, SBUS and RSSI ADC is disabled. Uh, moving across to the receiver tab you can see that everything uh, works exactly as it should um, and then auxiliary for which you can see twitching there that is um, channel 8 because you've got roll pitch your and throttle is 1 to 4 uh, so channel 8 which is auxiliary 4 this is the RSSI um, which is really useful it transmits that down there so if you're running say an OSD and you want that RSSI integration down in the corner of your display you can uh, make use of it here so all in all I think it's a great little package um, it's good if you're working with a tight build a lot of the build spaces seem to be getting smaller in an effort to keep things lighter and more compact um, so I guess we're going to see a lot more of this kind of thing uh, around the corner um, so as I said before my only slight concern is the uh, 9250 gyro uh, it just means you've got to be a little bit more careful when it comes to uh, soft mounting uh, because that gyro is a little bit more sensitive but it certainly can be made to fly very well um, at 8K, 8K. So uh, that'll do it for me. I uh, hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you guys in the next one.